This tutorial looks at redox reactions. These are chemical reactions where oxidation and reduction happen together. We'll also be looking at what makes a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent. We'll also return to a reaction that we met in one of the early chemistry modules which was to do with rusting. And we'll be re-remembering this rusting equation and again understanding why this involves oxidation and reduction. Oxidation and reduction in terms of loss and gain of electrons. We can consider rusting as a redox reaction because both oxidation and reduction are taking place. When we look at this reaction we can consider first of all that the iron which is in the form of iron atoms uh, they have no charge, become in the iron oxide Fe3 plus ions. Now these therefore have lost electrons, lost three electrons, and therefore that is a description of oxidation. Oxidation is loss, remember. Then we look at the oxygen atoms. The oxygen atoms have started off at an oxidation of zero and they have become oxide ions O2 minus ions so these have gained two electrons each now reduction is gain so the oxygen has been reduced in an earlier module we learnt that iron rusts because it comes in contact with oxygen from the air and with water but how do we stop iron from rusting well, an obvious way is to keep it out of the wet. Another way is to paint it or in some other way put a barrier over it, for example, grease or a layer of plastic. We're also going to look at using redox reactions in order to protect iron and steel from rusting. One method of protecting iron and steel from rusting is to galvanize it. This means coating it with zinc. Now you can see this dustbin here, this grash barrier, this uh, roofing nail and this uh, motorway crash barrier have all got this pale grey surface on them. This is galvanised steel. Galvanising works by two methods. The first method is the obvious. By coating the steel with a layer of another metal, it prevents oxygen and water coming in contact with the steel and stops it from rusting. But there's also a second method, and this is called sacrificial protection. Zinc is a more reactive metal than iron in the reactivity series, and therefore the zinc will corrode in preference to the iron. It loses its electrons more easily. Now remember, when iron or steel corrode, the iron atoms are oxidized. Oxidation is loss, so the iron is losing electrons. Now if that piece of iron or steel can be connected to a metal that loses electrons more easily, then that will protect the iron or steel structure from rusting. Each of these diagrams show very expensive steel structures being protected by sacrificial protection. Here we have a pipeline. The pipeline would be very expensive to replace if it corroded. Therefore it's connected by wires to pieces of magnesium metal. Magnesium is more reactive than iron and therefore will corrode or lose its electrons in preference to the iron. This protects the iron in the steel from rusting. So the added magnesium protects the steel, it sacrifices itself. Here on the ship the hull is protected by pieces of magnesium bolted to the hull. The magnesium will corrode in preference to the steel of the hull. Here, the steel legs of the drilling platform would be very prone to corrosion. To protect them, a piece of magnesium has been attached to the rig by a cable. The magnesium will corrode in preference to the iron or steel in the legs and therefore will protect the legs from corrosion. 
Here's a past exam question. This question is about rusting. The rusting of iron involves both oxidation and reduction. Write down the name of this type of reaction. That would be redox. Galvanized iron is iron coated in a thin layer of zinc. The iron does not rust. Write about the ways in which the zinc protects or prevents iron from rusting. Uh, one way is it forms a barrier. And that will stop the air and water coming in contact with the iron. The second method is by sacrificial protection. So we'll use that term. saying that zinc is more reactive than iron so it corrodes in preference and there's the answer scheme one was the idea of it acting as a barrier and then either talking about the zinc being a sacrificial metal or it corroding instead of iron, or one mark for the idea that the zinc is more reactive or loses electrons more easily than iron. Steel food cans are coated on the inside, usually with the metal tin. Now we're going to look at why that is done and how it stops the uh, iron or steel from rusting. Steel cans have to be coated on the inside to stop the steel from reacting with the acids in the food. For example, a can of peaches would contain citric acid and the citric acid would react with the steel of the can. And therefore, cans have been coated on the inside with a metal tin. This acts as a barrier and stops the food from coming in contact with the steel. However, it does not work by sacrificial protection because if scratched the iron will corrode in preference to the tin this is because iron is actually a more reactive metal than tin so in fact if the inside of the can is uh, scratched the iron will actually corrode more than it would have done had it just been on its own it will corrode in preference to the tin so redox reactions involve both oxidation and reduction. And you should be able to recognize when oxidation or reduction is happening and also which substance is the oxidizing agent or reducing agent. By definition, an oxidizing agent causes something to be oxidized and a reducing agent causes something to be reduced. So let's look at an example, zinc in copper two sulfate solution. When zinc, a more reactive metal, is put in copper 2 sulfate, the zinc displaces the copper. The copper changes from copper ions in the copper sulfate to copper atoms in the copper, while the zinc changes from zinc atoms to zinc ions in the zinc sulfate. So when we look at what's happening to each of these individually, the copper ions here which were 2 plus are being reduced to copper atoms which are Cu. In order to do that the copper ions need to gain electrons. The copper ions are being reduced. Reduction is gain. Why are they being reduced? Because they're reacting with the zinc. Therefore the zinc is the reducing agent. Looking now at the zinc atoms, the zinc atoms Zn are changing into zinc ions Zn2 plus the way they're doing this is by losing electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Why is the zinc doing this? Because of the reaction with the copper sulfate. So the copper sulfate here is the oxidizing agent. The next part of the syllabus is a very high level standard of chemistry. This is really on the edges of AS level. 
and it's looking at oxidation and reduction in terms of the interconversion of various types of systems, for example, iron and Fe2 plus ions, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions, uh, that's the iron 2 and the iron 3 ions, chlorine molecules and chloride ions, and various electrode reactions. You need to be able to recognize these and when oxidation is taking place and when reduction is taking place. Remember that oil rig. So, some rather hard equations here. You can recognize whether something is oxidation or reduction from an iron electron half equation. So, for example, the Fe2 plus here gains two electrons to become Fe atoms, and because reduction is gain, that's a reduction reaction. In the second one, the Fe3 plus plus an electron would give Fe2 plus. Now, in this one, the iron 3 plus has gained electrons. Therefore, that's reduction. Reduction is gain. In the next one, the chlorine molecule plus two electrons would give us two chloride ions. Here again, the chlorine has gained electrons. That would be reduction. And the next one, the Fe atoms here. The Fe atom has lost two electrons to become an Fe2 plus ion. Oxidation is lost, so this one is an oxidation reaction. The Fe2 plus losing a further electron to make Fe3 plus. Again, the Fe2 plus has been oxidized because oxidation is lost. And finally, in this section, the two chloride ions, each losing an electron to form a chlorine molecule. Each has lost electrons, oxidation is lost. So this again is oxidation. In these mixtures, which is the oxidizing agent? Well here, the Fe2 plus has lost an electron. Each of those ions has lost an electron to form an Fe3 plus. Therefore, why has that happened? Because they've reacted with the oxidizing agent. So the oxidizing agent here is chlorine. In this second case, the iron is what has been oxidized. The iron atom has been oxidized to Fe2+. Why has that happened? Because it's reacted with the Fe3+. So here the Fe3+, is the oxidizing agent. And let's finish on a couple of easy questions from past papers. Look at the picture of the car. Some of the car body is made from iron. One disadvantage of using iron is that it rusts. Oxygen and water are needed for rusting to happen. Hydrated iron 3 oxide is made. Write a word equation. Well, they've given you most of what you need to know in the question, even though you are expected to learn this one off by heart. We start off with iron. We start off with oxygen. And we also start off with water. And we end up with hydrated iron oxide. And what type of reaction is rusting? Choose from this list. Well, given the choice out of those, it would be a redox reaction. And these are the answers as I wrote them.